How are you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Moustache with some new tips in order to help you create in your own green area in the raw store following the principle of do as nature does. Whenever we get to grow your own food, most people think that they don't have enough space, especially if you're based in a city where it's pretty hard to get a house with a garden. However, with a bit of creativity, most vegetables could be grown in containers straight on your balcony, patio, terrace, or even on a wall if you use the vertical space. Growing in container, I think it's a great way because you are in total control of soil mix, temperature, and humidity. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you all you need to know to grow one of my favorite crops, potatoes in containers. <laughs> There are three main types of potato named according to when you plant them and when you harvest them. First earlies, second earlies and main crop. You should choose what to plant in your garden based on the space available and also if you're planning to consume your harvest straight away or store it for later use. First earlies or new potatoes are so called because they are the first one to mature between June and July. They take 10 to 12 weeks to mature and this is exactly what I planted in my container. If you're planning to plant them straight in the ground, they need to be spaced 30 centimeters between each potato and 15 centimeters deep. Also, if you plant them in rows, they need to be spaced 60 centimeters from each row. Second earlies, also called new potatoes, they take a few extra weeks to mature and they will be ready around mid-July. Second earlies takes between 14 to 16 weeks to mature and they need to be planted in ground in the same way as you were planting first earlier. I would say there are mainly three benefits when choosing and growing this kind of varieties of potatoes. First of all, they are less prone to be affected by potato blight because they are harvested much earlier than this disease has taken hold. Second, they taste much better if consumed as soon as you harvest them. This is the main reason why, even if they are a bit more expensive than main crops, most people decide to grow these two varieties. And lastly, they mature much quicker than main crop, which is an extra bonus for people with a limited space, because after you harvest them, you still got enough space to plant another main crop in succession to your potatoes. Main crop potatoes takes the longest to mature, and they are generally harvested between August and October. Main crop generally takes between 16 to 22 weeks to mature. Main crop produce bigger plants, so if planted in ground, make sure to keep a distance of 40 centimeters between the tubers and 75 centimeters between the rows. To select your container to grow potatoes, it's important that you choose something with the right size. You could potentially use a compost bag to grow your potatoes. However, I would recommend to use fabric pots or something with a breathable material. Once you have the container, you need to decide how many medium-sized early crop potatoes you are able to fit in one of your containers. This will obviously depend upon the size of the container that you decided to use. You need a minimum of 15 centimeters or six inches between each potato and the side of the containers. A quick tip that will simplify your life is to place one of the potatoes in the middle and then start spacing the others. So in this way, you will be able to maximize the harvest and fit as many as you could. If you decided to use fabric pods or compost bags, you can just roll the sides until roughly half the eighth of the total size of the bag. You can then poke a few holes at the bottom to have drainage and fill your bag with compost mix to a depth of about 30 centimeters. You can use a mix of one third good potting mix and two third organic compost. Whenever I dig the hole to put my potato, I also add a handful of worm casting because it seems to help during the growth of the potato. Within three weeks or so, they will have begun to shoot. Keep your compost damp, but not soaking wet. Once the shoots are about 15 centimeters, roll out the sides of the bag a few turns and top up with more compost mix. This process is called earthing, which means keep topping up with compost mix the more your plant is growing. In this way, you will protect the tubers that are forming underground. Keep earthing them up bit by bit, week after week, until you get to the top of your container 
and then you can let the plant go into flower. Remember to keep your container well watered because your potatoes are not growing in ground where they have access to water deep down, but they have a limited access to moisture. If your shoots are growing too tall, you probably over fertilized with a fertilizer really high in nitrogen, which helps during the vegetative growth of the plant. Potatoes are really sensitive to frost once their leaves are above the ground. So don't plant them too early, even if you feel tempted to do so. You can get a head start by ordering your seed potatoes and start sprouting them indoor in a protected area around January. This is also called as cheating and is one of the first things that you start at the beginning of the year. You can lay out your little tubers, eyes upright, in a cool, light but frost-free place at about 10 degrees Celsius. If you have a place which is lightly warmed up, that's ideal and also they need light, so don't keep them in the dark. If you have just a few potato tubers, you can lay them out in an egg container to cheat. There are many controversial opinions about the necessity of cheating your potatoes. I would highly suggest to do a comparison growth with and without cheating, so you can see yourself which one works best. In my case, it worked really good to cheat my potatoes so they have a head start and I can harvest much earlier. Also, cheated potatoes tend to have a quicker and slightly larger harvest. If you cheat early varieties, you can harvest as soon as June and for main crops, you can potentially harvest around August or September so you would avoid the blight. Keep an eye on your potatoes while they cheat and what you're looking for is short green shots at about four, six weeks. They need to be two, three centimeters coming out of the eyes of your potatoes. You don't want the white spaghetti-like thing that comes out of potatoes when they're kept in the dark, but you're looking for short, either pink or green shots. A quick thing that I learned to maximize the harvest is to rub off all the shots, except three or four, at the top of the tuber before planting out. If you leave all the shots, in fact, you will end up with loads of small potatoes. I'll come back in about one month to see the progress on this batch of potatoes that I planted in my container. It has been roughly 30 days since we planted our potatoes. And as you can see now, there are roughly six to eight inches tall. The weather wasn't great over the past month or so, but they are now starting to pick up. If I didn't cheat my potato seedlings, I would have plants half the size of what I have now. This means that even if you don't cheat your potatoes, you will still have healthy plants, but it will just take a bit longer. When your potato seedlings have sprouted and they reach roughly a size of 12 centimeters, it's time to start healing your soil. This means basically adding more soil to the container and trying to create a hill around the base of your potato plant. Add four or five centimeters of soil around your plant so they are surrounded by a small hill of soil for about one third of your plant. Don't worry if there are covered leaves that look like dying because the plant will produce more. Keep repeating the healing process until you reach the top of your container with the soil. I also added a thick layer of mulch to retain moisture and also to maintain a constant temperature. If you grow them in container, mulching is definitely a good option just because you won't have to water as much as if they didn't have mulch. There are a few different pests that could potentially affect your plants and one of the worst ones is definitely the potato colorado beetle. The beetle is noticeable for its ability to resist pesticides. Over the last 50 years, it has become resistant to over 52 chemical compounds in pesticides. In the wild, its typical lifespan is between 2 to 12 months. After the winter months, they become active around May time and they start mating and infesting your crops. They lay over 300 eggs in a span of 4 to 5 weeks. The eggs hatch in about 4 to 10 days, from which the larvae comes out and they last for a period of 21 days. This insect will feed on the leaves of your crop almost continuously, only stopping for molting. To control this beetle, I would suggest a combination of hand picking and disposing in soapy water, and also attracting lace wings and ladybirds to your garden, and trap crops works great. You could potentially sacrifice a few plants of tomato and corn to confuse and delay the infestation. Just remember that potato plants can lose up to 30% of their leaves and stems without affecting the yield. It's finally time to harvest my potatoes and we are now at the beginning of July, even if the weather doesn't really look like it. Over the years that I try to grow potatoes, 
I found out that they taste best if consumed straight away after the harvest. A quick tip to guarantee that you always have the best tasting potatoes would be to cut just a small section around your container and distract just the potatoes that you're about to consume. If you don't break and damage the roots too much, they will continue to mature so you can just pick them up as you go. However, I will harvest mine all at once because I want to make space for another crop vegetable. Harvest your first or second earliest when the flowers have completely opened or the buds have dropped. This will be around June or July. For main crop instead, you should wait until your plant starts to wilting and so you can lift the plant up and pick up all your potatoes. However, make sure to do this before the frost starts. The easiest solution to harvest your crop from the container will be to empty the whole content on a flat surface or into another container. Alternatively, if you are growing your potatoes in a big container like mine, cut all the plants at the base and then you can start harvesting your potatoes. Don't chuck away your green stems but chop them down in small pieces and you can add them to your compost bin to decompose. Uh, the reason is that they will still be full of nutrients that they were going down into the tubers to make them mature. If you see some weird fruit coming out of your flowers, do not eat that, uh, it's poisonous. And it's also poisonous for uh, pets that you got around. On average, you will look for medium-sized potatoes and not the overgrown because they taste much better. <music> This is one of the easiest crops to grow and to introduce kids into the gardening world. There are many other things that could potentially be grown in containers, but potatoes are one of the fabulous display for your patio, balcony or garden. I hope you liked today's video and if so, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you next Friday for a new episode. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.